Chapter 4 Retaining Wall Design A retaining wall is a wall structure that resists a combination of earth and hydrostatic loadings. It is required to retain material in place without undergoing excessive deflections, overturning, or sliding. This figure shows a typical retaining wall. It is normally required when there is a significant change in terms of elevations. And it is essential to ensure the stability of the higher elevated soil. There are three basic categories of retaining wall, namely the gravity wall, counterfoot wall, and cantilever wall. The characteristic and the structural actions are fundamentally different. However, the technique used to analyze, to design, and their detailings are those normally used for the concrete structure. The gravity wall are normally short and bulky. It is normally constructed by concrete of large mesh or some other material which perceive heavy weight. The gravity wall relies on the self-weight for the stability that resists the overturning and sliding. It is normally designed to be short and bulky in order to lower down the center of gravity in order to prevent overturning. Its heavy weight leads to high frictional force in order to control the sliding of the retaining wall. For the concrete gravity wall, the reinforcements are normally provided at the concrete face in order to control the thermal and shrinkage cracking. This is mainly due to the mass casting of the retaining wall, where there is a significant difference in terms of the temperature within the wall panel and the surface. When the concrete is cast in mass, the hydration process increases the heat within the member, while the surrounding of the member releases heat quickly to the atmosphere. This forms a differences in terms of temperature within and to the surrounding of the member. Due to the heat, the internal regions of the member is expanding. Due to the lower degree of temperature surrounding the member, the member is undergoing shrinkage. This leads to thermal shrinkage cracking. To overcome this, a layer of reinforcement bar is to be provided near the surface of the concrete. This table summarizes the typical design considerations of a gravity wall. First, you ensure that the resultant forces are within the middle one-third of the base. It is to avoid lifting. The middle one-third is referring to the middle one-third portions of the base. Due to the horizontal force caused by the active pressure and the vertical force caused by the self-weight of the gravity wall, there will be a resultant force. This resultant force must fall within middle one-third in order to prevent the retaining wall to be uplift. This is essential to ensure the stability of the gravity wall. Next, you need to ensure the resisting moment is always greater than the overturning moment. This is to avoid overturning of the gravity wall. The overturning moment is normally due to the active pressure force times the lever arm. To reduce the 
active moment, the height of the retaining wall is to be reduced. As for the resisting moment, it is contributed by the self weight times the lever arm. To increase the resistance, the weight of the gravity wall is to be increased. Next, you need to ensure the gravity wall doesn't undergo sliding. Therefore, the friction force must be greater than the sliding force. The sliding force is due to the active pressure while the frictional force is due to the vertical load due to its self-weight. Also, you need to ensure that the soil bearing capacity needs to be greater than the self-weight. This is to prevent settlement of the gravity wall. As the gravity wall is built on large mass, it typically lead to heavy load. Therefore, it is essential to ensure that the soil should be able to receive the heavy weight. All these are the considerations in terms of the structural stability. As for the structural design, surface reinforcement bar need to be provided to be at least greater than the minimum rebar area. The purpose is to control the thermal and shrinkage cracking. The thermal and shrinkage crash is caused by the mass casting that have high hydration heat. In terms of the reinforcement for the moment, shear and also deflections, as the gravity wall is relatively short and bulky, these aspects are not critical, thanks to large effective depth. Next, the counterfoot wall. Counterfoot wall is normally used when the overall height of the wall is too large to be constructed economically. It is normally required when there is extremely high differences in terms of the elevations. The wall will be relatively thin and it requires the counterfoot to strengthen the thin wall. The counterfoot is constructed at a certain distance or spacing among each other to strengthen the wall throughout the length. For that, the earth pressure will act on the thin wall which spans horizontally between the massive counterfoot. And the design of reinforcements are in principles of a cantilever wall supported by a counterfoot and also the clear span between the counterfoot. The advantage of the counterfoot wall is that the concrete volume can be reduced considerably. It avoids problems of large pore and also it reduces the quantity of excavation. However, it leads to the structural considerations where reinforcement bar is to be increased significantly and the structural design is more complicated. These are typical design considerations of a counterfoot wall. The considerations in terms of the structural stability are typically same for the counterfoot wall with the gravity wall. This is to ensure that the resultant force fall within one third of the base, the resisting moments need to be greater than overturning moment, the frictional force needs to be greater than the sliding force, the soil bearing capacity needs to be greater than the self weight of the member. As for the structural design, there are more aspects to be considered. The moment reinforcement provided by the reinforcement bar need to be greater than the moment load. 
and this is applicable for both directions of the reinforcement bar. This is to prevent the bending failure of the structure as the tall wall will lead to the large lateral loops. The shear reinforcement should be greater than the shear loop. It is to prevent the shear failure of the structure. You might need to check for the Asia resistance as the counterfeit is basically at as the thrust which undergo compressions or tension failure depending on its arrangement. The counterfoot wall might also undergo excessive deflections which need to be checked as the member is typically thin in comparison to its height the thermal and shrinkage checking is not that critical. Next is a cantilever wall. It is typically designed as a vertical cantilever spanning from a large rigid base. It relies on the weight of the back view, which is this one, to provide the stability of the structure. The stability rely on the resultant force to fall within the middle third and also to prevent the overturning and sliding. This figure shows a typical retaining wall where the back fields are utilized to ensure the stability. The design considerations for the cantilever wall are listed here. Again, the structural stability will be the same for the three retaining wall types. As for the structural design, it is essential to ensure the moment resistance is greater than the load, the shear resistance is greater than the shear load, the deflection is within the limit, and the thermal shrinkage is not that critical. It is typically preferred that the back field is fully utilized to ensure the stability of the retaining wall. However, there are some circumstances that the back field is unable to be used. This diagram shows a typical conditions where the back view can be used and cannot be used for the retaining wall stability. Let's say this is the developing site. The adjacent loads are here. The construction activities can only be allowed within the developed size. The existing earth level for this adjacent site is 5 meters above sea level and the existing road level for the adjacent site here is 10 meters above sea level. The proposed platform level for the developing site is 7.5. That means there will be a differences in terms of elevation here and here. The load boundary are here and development are not allowed at this region. With that, the retaining wall can be arranged in this manner. For this retaining wall, the back field can be used to ensure the stability of the retaining wall. As for this, the back view is unable to be utilized. In consequence, we will expect a larger base area of the retaining wall here. This slide compares the three types of retaining wall, namely the gravity wall, the counterfort wall, and the cantilever wall. 
In general, the gravity walls are normally short and bulky. The counterfoot wall are normally tall and slender, and the cantilever walls are moderate. In terms of the mass, the gravity walls are relatively large and heavy in comparison to its height. The counterfoot wall is normally relatively small and light in comparison to its height and the cantilever walls are normally in the no moderate range. In terms of design considerations, the significance, the likelihood varies slightly. As the gravity walls are normally short and bulky, the overturning, the sliding and the middle third are less likely to occur in comparison to the counterfoot wall and the cantilever wall. As gravity wall involves mass casting, the thermal shrinkage will be critical for gravity wall but it is not critical for the counterfeit and cantilever wall. The settlement considerations is more critical for a heavy wall, which is gravity wall. In comparison with the counterfoot wall, which is light and thin, the settlement issue is less likely to occur. As for the reinforcement for moment and shear resistance, the gravity wall, which are short and bulky, normally have a large depth and do not require moment resistance and shear resistance. This needs to be checked for the counterfeit and cantilever walls.